will apply to all the other DAOs or all the working groups that wish to provide services. <clears throat> I started working with that with Levy. Mm -hmm. um, but like we made some advance, but we uh, like dropped the work. But yeah. I still think, and that's why it's ongoing, because I still think it's something we need to work. Um, yeah. What we did is like, okay, um, what did Gravity did for the TC that could do for other communities? Mm -hmm. And what could be like the value proposition of Gravity being different but complementary to the TC? Yeah, and, and this is something that I've I put a lot of thought in in terms of like, what does it mean to provide these services? And like, you know, if, you, if you're going to provide these services for a fee, where should that money go? And I, in my opinion, it should go to the people that are actually performing that work, right? Um, but it's like, how do you generate revenue either for uh, Gravity or for the TEC? <laughs> and I don't think either of those things are very feasible. Um, you could probably mandate that they have to use TEC to purchase those services. But that's about all you can do, you know? Um, you know, I, I have been thinking a lot on this and my like long scope idea and my ideal, I don't know, world would be that um, we want to, to, to launch a token. So I think that we could somehow, um, within this, the design of the token, somehow recognize or give a small amount to the TC, yeah. to governance, and also some other thing that I think would be that um, we could make a pool with TC and, and, and the Gravity token and make people buy our services in Gravity. So, like, the, the TEC benefits from gravity. Um, so, like, a bonding curve with the TEC as the reserve? Um, oh, no, 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 no. What like I'm our, trying to do is a bonding curve with uh, Thai. Well, yeah. And then, like, the common pool will have Newtons, which is, right. like, probably the name of the token. See, I think this is where like most of the TEC has very, very different um, views on it because like I think that uh, the TEC token needs to find utility if it's going to succeed. And I think starting gravity, while gravity is stand like a standalone organization, can work. I think it would come at the cost of the TEC. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where I'm like. I kind of wanted to like try out this like a subscription service, kind of like if somebody, an organization is interested in the services that the TEC offers, they, we, we require them to do a governance swap or we go, we give you TEC tokens, you give us your tokens. And it's kind of like a subscription type model. And so you say, I want to enlist in these services. And in order to do that, you have to give us your tokens and we'll give you ours. And that way we switch governance, we diversify but the, our but, then, but what do you do with their token? It's like another DAO token, which... Yep, we, you'd have to set rules around it, but um, as long as that, that governance swap happens, the, you, we integrate the services that we provide to token engineering projects like Gravity or comms to that group. And so if they want both services, they'd have to do a larger swap. If that makes sense. But I don't understand how that swap benefits the TC. Uh, we diversify the assets that we ha we're holding, and we could have a lot more upside in terms of, uh, you know, like if we went to Bankless DAO and we did a swap with them, we would get exposure to their token price and all that. So. Um, in the long term, it helps out a lot, but yeah, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. It doesn't create yeah. revenue immediately. And also, like, if you look at the past, like all the token swaps we did, like with Kives and then with Water, with Mint, like we swap with Shapeshift, Honey, uh, Bright ID, bunch of communities. The only thing that that 
Like it only affects us in a negative way. Oh, you mean the water water proposal? I mean, yeah, the water. Yeah, yeah. and it's basically a double swap between. It, yeah, I'm not a fan of what we did there, but down in price, you know, further than us, they are. It was a cool liquidity thing, but like, out, like us outside of, because because we can't do anything with the water tokens, you know. <laughs> like if yeah, we could, I if see. we could sell the water tokens and at any point in time, it would it wouldn't be that bad, but we cannot. Like we, the only we thing we can, yeah. The only thing we can do is like remove the TC and pay a fifteen percent. Yeah. And that sucks. Yep. Um yeah, and so yeah, that's a, a thing that we're battling in the trying to deal with this treasury stuff right now. But yeah, I there, there's there's some things that we just we need to figure out in terms of like how how we make TEC work really well with these services. And I think that the boundaries between services provided by gravity and TEC is really hard because it's like at what point are you no longer, you know, Wonka? What point? At what point are you no longer part of the TEC? You're just gravity, you know. And does it matter? Does it, does it matter that you're not part of the TEC? Does it matter that you're not using the TEC economy anymore? And so those are questions are like, I don't know, really at the heart of it. Yeah, let, let's let's dive on this and. I love to be talking about this with you, Nate. I mean, I ha I haven't had this conversation with you like this, and it's super interesting to hear other opinion, other voice. I think that um, really there there's no competition and at any point, and that we can have like those boundaries that are porous enough to yeah. have like good interaction but at the same time um finding a way for for each thing to have its own identity yeah and that's a tough part you know <laughs> i i always come back to this idea of like why do we why do we keep thinking of ourselves as an organization rather than an economy and we should just yeah. focus on being an economy Exactly. But that's what, you know, if we focus as an economy, then, you know, like companies can come and go and the economy should still work. In. Exactly. But we have to figure out a way. Like, my big thing is like, it, everything would work if we could force everybody to use the bonding curve. If we just kind of figure out a way to make sure, like, if we provide you a service, you give me a bonding curve receipt, basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we like, MTC for the service, like since we still do not have a gravity token. Yeah. But they were like, oh no, we just give you USDC, you figure out your stuff. And then... Yeah. And 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 that's the, not like the hard part. Yeah. It's like we I don't know. There's a lot of things about it that are difficult, but um but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind contributing to that boundaries between services provided by gravity and TDC. I think it's issue 1273. So, um, but yeah. Also, all that is very related to our idea of, of having our own token. I don't know. I, I, I was also always thinking like, yeah, maybe giving some of our tokens to the TDC, um, like as a retroactive of the proposals that we have been receiving from them. Yep. And, um, also having a pool of the token that and and may and the the clients of gravity paying gravity in TC in T, in in the gravity token, but um, yeah, it would be also really cool to find how can we interact with the TC and also you know all this idea of us also um, trying to become a DAO of our own. It's it's super yeah. interesting. Because I, I always think of that uh, concept of service DAO. I yeah. don't know. It, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, and that's actually an interesting approach to it. Like, as in, like, you start your own token, you find external capital from other organizations, and then, say, you know, 20% of the, the initial token supply goes to the TEC. And as, like, a retroactive thing of, like, hey... You're you're not only 
we're not only paying you back, but here's some governance tokens within gravity to help influence the future. That's what we're trying to do. I think that, that should be might not be a bad model. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say like uh, like it should be done with conviction voting because the the way like I'm trying to you know I'm working with Sam to build this token and the idea is like you know we are not going to have a hatch, which means like we are not going to yeah. ask people to add money. So we're kind of trying to have like uh, a model where we have like the bonding curve like with 100% reserve. Uh, yeah. And then we can just modify, uh, you know, make the reserve lower the reserve with a double thing uh, vote, and yeah. that would immediately give to all the gravity owners a profit. And then yeah. you know that's the mechanism we're trying. I mean, it's still very early stage. We need to get so much feedback on gravity, but the idea is like, yeah, get you know, yeah. let the some of the people, so because they will, will have like uh, immediately benefit, and then you know there will be money flowing into the gravity common pool, and then when we have like the common pool, I think like if we want to pay, uh, if we want to retroactively pay back to the TC, it should come from the common pool, not from the reserve, because that would alterate too much the economics of the token. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and. I think this is where like a roadmap will help a lot. I think that should be our first priority, to be honest with you. This is something that I gotta add to this sprint that came from our sprint retro. But having a roadmap, understanding like what what are the objectives of our working groups as a whole? Um, you know, where are we heading? Because uh, I mean, gra even gravity, like, or even transparency too. Like, there there are some options here to fully pivot and to developing these service styles in almost every working group. And if we can figure out the right model for that, I think we'll be OK. Um, but we just have to figure out a model that works and what services we can provide and who to provide them to. I, I feel like for transparency, it's like very hard because you know, like it takes so much time. You know, get all the recordings, get the documentation. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I guess the, the big thing that you have is products, though, you know? like. We have, you know, you have a, you have this kind of aggregate, comprehensive suite of things that make transparency transparent. You know, what I'm saying like you have your bots, you have your documentation practices, you have, uh, you know, the recorders, you have the upload, like documenting that entire process and and packaging them into to a product. I think could be a way to do that within transparency. Um, but still, someone needs to do it. It's like, a lot of I mean, work. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. What, what, what I mean is, like, even if you package it and, you know, okay, this is what uh, transparency does, and then someone, let's say, buy, buys it, but then they need to, to pay to someone to do recordings, to someone to do this. Oh, oh no. But, but I mean, like, you, you let the organizations do that. All I'm saying is, like, you say, okay, we have these bots, we have the, these processes and we're going to come in and provide you and maybe even teach your organization how to do it and after that it's up to them you know you're just saying here we'll we'll help you implement these bots in your discord we'll help you uh set up your recorder we'll tell you exactly what to do okay but then you say i'm out the bot were deploying, yeah the bot we're deploying right now which we are recorder bot like the, the intention on that is like make us, but then this bot is not following this potential services, yep. which is like not, like this bot is only going to be used by us, probably even. But you know, the more, more this bot grows, the higher yeah. the chances to get this one back. What planet? Yeah, I, but I mean, like the say that say that one more time. I'm sorry. So, so like Rex, Rex is deploying on transparency, and we will we'll make the proposal on, on Giveit, uh, and basically will be a transparency Giveit bot, where you know, like we are not following Discord terms and services, so yeah. the bot could get banned at any moment. Uh, so you know, if we are only using us, and then you know, not making so much sound of it, no, of course not making sales of the bot or anything like that would be. Yeah. 
But I'm saying like, so if, so if, if, if a token engineering project comes to the TEC and they say, okay, we want to be matched with some token engineers. We want to hire some token engineers, but we also want to employ these services to make our DAO ready to go, uh, our project ready to, to rock and roll. And then the most, you know, tested way possible that means including gravity it means including transparency it means including everything that we've worked really hard on these past couple of years to develop and if we're able to provide them a kind of this like holistic comprehensive approach and do it within a very short amount of time we could you know we could charge a good amount of money for that and create some really good revenue and so like if you have your transparency whatever product that you want to offer within that TE services package, as well as Gravity having whatever they want to offer in that TEC services package. And we can say, you know, here are all these different working groups that have contributed to how to develop a, a well-working DAO and, and go in there and just say, here's how you do it. This is how you teach. This is how you do it. And then we back off and go to the next one because the demand is there. There are so many token engineering projects that come to us already that they have no idea what they're doing. They want to start a DAO. They want to start a project. And we have these types of things. We just need to learn how to package them as services or products and, 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 and basically sell them. Uh, and so like, I think that if we kind of come on to this like, same page where we're like, OK, our role right now is to help out token engineering projects that are wanting to start off and give them what they need to succeed then we can make some good money. We'll keep that TEC economy rolling and, and things will head in the right direction. Um, but I think that we really got to focus on uh, each working group, finding out what they can offer a token engineer that's coming in for the first time saying, I have this idea and I have some capital to deploy for it. What can we provide them to help them start off and become successful? And so, yeah, I don't know. Those are just my thoughts around it. Like that's what I would like, like to I, see happen. I agree. I mean that that'd be great, but then again, like it's like then they should hire someone to do that stuff for them. Like it's not like you know, the transparency crew is like can't support all the DAOs because that would be Oh, but but you have you have so much knowledge in transparency, you know. You you've been you know, doing this for a couple of years and you know exactly no. what 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 to expect, what to do, what tools you need. And like I mean, providing that is huge. Like, there's a product there somewhere, you know? Yeah, I, I agree on that. But then what I'm trying to say is, like, whoever uh, wants to build that out, then they would have to have, like, their own safety or their own bear, their own IV, you know? Yeah, so but like, I mean, like, can... that's on them to find, you know? Like, we, we, we can only go so far. We're, we're just here to, to build the infrastructure for you. If you want to find value aligned people, you know that's on you. We we'd have nothing to do with that. Like, okay, uh, that you know, that like the CAD CAD community, like they need to find their own CAD CAD people to 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 handle that stuff. We're not going to provide that. It's just if you're starting off a project, let's you know, hey, we have the tools, we have the infrastructure ready to go. All we all we we can go in there for two week period, help you set things up, teach you how to use it and teach you how to be as transparent as possible, teach you how to manage conflict, and then we move on to the next project. And we just keep doing that for all these token engineering projects that want to start up and you know, generate yeah. some revenue in the meantime. I mean, yeah, that would be ideal. But see, like doing that would require each working group and all of us to get on the same page. And this is why I think a roadmap is really, really important. And I really, <laughs> I'm already just overwhelmed doing the treasury stuff and um but i see that this is far more important <laughs> and so like my attention yeah. just keeps coming back to that yeah do, do you think like the treasury thing is even going to happen like from what i speak to people it's like you know yeah. funding groups should not touch game and then i mean i don't know like i feel like we should make a proposal first to the community if, if we still want to put resources there so, as, I mean, as you say, like, you're doing this and then you can focus on other things that you could be doing. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, like, I think we should be, uh, you know, take the good fights. Like, there's some, like... like so, I, was so DMing people. I was the aiming people. Yeah, I was the aiming people for the, you know, the tokens 
for the treasury, how, how you know they would yeah. feel safe. And then majority of token holders, especially like the token holders with more than 10k of TC, uh, they were like, uh, no, die. The ABC is a not touch game. So, so they even that... Bitcoin or ETH. The ABC is not good. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. No, 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 no. Like the ABCs are not touch game. Like when you say like taking money away, like you yeah. are modifying the system. Like. You, you... Well, I mean, I think taking money from the common pool is not modifying the system. I mean, it is a little bit, but um, you just have less to work with. But I do think the treasury is going to be very, very important, regardless of like, um, you know, how much we get from the common pool. Right now, the initial proposal for the treasury is going to be taking it out of the laser tag wallet, which is mm -hmm. completely unmanaged and not doing what we wanted it to do. Um, and so, I would say there's probably around you know sixty thousand. Then, then you're going to sell those TC and buy what? Uh, no, we're going to take it and diversify our holdings. So, um, put it into index tokens, um, ETH. Uh, you know, diff different investment strategies, stable coins that can earn small amount of interest with low risk. And so the idea is just kind of prove to the community that <clears throat> the treasury can earn us, you know, $10,000 I mean, over the next five you, months. But you're going to dump TC. Like if you sell those TCs, TC is going to get hurt. This is a lot of TCs, like a well selling, right? Um, yeah, so that, that's a, kind of the conversation that we're having right now is what we should do with the revenue that we do make from the treasury. And do we buy back TEC tokens? Do we send it to the reward system? Do we, um, you know, because right now what we want to try to do is maintain the operations here. We want people to be rewarded for their contributions. Without that, we have no, you know, we have no human capital to help with that. And so that is a big, big part of what we're trying to accomplish with the treasury's statement so um yeah i do have the policy document if you would like to make some comments on it i mean i just i just think it's you know when you make this proposal on snapshot then why should i save my tc why shouldn't i just sell and then when you dump the price then i'll buy again if i want you know yeah and, and yeah you're more than welcome to do that i think that's you know we're at that stage where, you know, the thaw is coming and we have a lot of things to talk about. And maybe in the short term, that's something that we're going to have to suffer through. But in the long term, I think having a treasury is going to be very, very, very important. Because, um, you know, right now we just we have to figure out the model to generate revenue. And I think that is providing TE services to TE projects that come in asking for it because the demand is there. Once we do that, we, we have economic velocity on the ABC, start generating funds for the common pool. We have a treasury to supplement that, and that is the game plan going forward. But getting everybody on page with that type of vision is very difficult. We have to have to come to consensus because everybody has a different idea of the organizational direction that we want to go. And so um, this is something that, <laughs> you know, when, when, when we look at the forum and Trent comes on and says, hey, you know, we, we have to start learning how to make money and we have to start a treasury and we have to put it in yearn and earn this money and it's like well yeah but but don't expect that to be the saving grace of of the tec economy it's just not going to happen and so yeah. managing those types of expectations in the short term but also preparing ourselves for long-term growth is a very difficult conversation to have and i don't want to rock the boat to, to the point where people are just abandoning ship because they think it, it's all going to fail um and so these are very difficult conversations to have, and it's very, you know, I'm just trying to balance that when it comes yeah. to, to work in Sampo. Hey, Dergadas. I also Sorry, feel like... Sampo. Go ahead, Zepti. I was just going to say, like, I also feel like the timing is, like, you know, it's deep discussions, but then people is kind of FK. Like, a lot of TC folks are attending Burning Man, which means, like, one month out. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, me, Mitch, Lauren, Grief, uh, Chewy, probably, um, Tom is attending Burning Man. Uh, I don't know, a lot of, and I, I don't know, like, I feel like I'd like to be part of the discussion, but right now, 
I feel like I'm pretty. Uh, I have a lot of to- as everyone. I have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, what I want to do is like the things I have to do, so I can go there uh, and just forget for a month. And then when I'll come back, I, I mean, it would feel very, felt very bad if like everything is totally different. You know what I'm trying to say. I mean, we're gonna have to work at a different pace, but like, like I said, the, I think the the most important thing we can do right now is collectively develop a roadmap together. Um, I think we've been on all separate pages for a, quite a long time now, and I think the, the most beneficial thing we can do is develop this roadmap together and say, okay, this is the objective. This is what we're going for. Let's just go and execute. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean that. that- that's a good idea. So if you have any time, um, I would say that I would like to start a roadmap document to really start talking about this because this is a like priority number one in my opinion. But um, I don't mm-hmm. know if you have any other thoughts around the roadmap stuff for no, what our objective road, should be. Like, I think roadmap is important. Like what I'm more worried about is like you know this treasury thing. Like yeah, especially like when people is not active. You know, core people. Yeah. Uh, like that could be seen as uh, even at a takeover, right? I mean, yeah. If, yeah. I don't know. Like I, I the only thing I'm saying, I, like, is, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I think there's, there's, it's a lot to ask of people, but it's also, you know, the way I see it is that there's not one organization or economy right now in in this space that doesn't have an active treasury. Um, yeah, and if you want to last the long term, you need to know how to manage those functions, especially in a decentralized way. And so, I think we can really try to pioneer the way we manage. Because right now, a lot of the treasuries that are managed in other DAOs, they're done internally by a small group of people who make all the decisions that are professionals, almost like they're professionalized yeah, but- types of decisions. And they the- they do it behind closed doors. And I think this is the wrong way to do it. Uh, they're mm-hmm. compensated internally, and I think that in the future we're going to have to have a way for a large group of people to be able to have input and decision making around treasury management, and that does not exist right now. And so I think one of the core principles of what we're trying to do in Sampo and the treasury management group is that we're trying to figure out a way to implement a governance structure that allows this treasury to be managed collectively by the entire community that has a say-so in different investment strategies, that has a say-so to allocate money towards wherever they want to allocate it towards to help supplement this TEC economy in the short term because this is this economic development period where we have this economy that is very nascent. We're not sure exactly how it's going to incorporate within the token engineering projects that we do have, but when we do, it will work. Uh, we have to have these treasury management functions available and operational if we're going to have long-term growth. And so that's my only thing with the, the treasury. That's my only, that's my, that's my pitch to the community, basically. Yeah, um, but basically like that's also, I'm working right now, uh, kind of collaborating with Blossom Labs and OneHive, like and then the TC, like I'm doing TC part the, with Aragon. Like the idea is, you know, they have like all this treasury and they have it in a multi-sig where the board have access and then this is like, the community is being pissed off and then now they are making votes like to send they yeah. have like 200 million uh and they want to send all this money away of the multisig to the to a DAO voting uh platform and then what the tc will be doing is like uh, having education we're already building a dashboard for them with general magic and then we will have like ground parts and stuff like you know then yeah, like what I'm trying to say is like we don't want to become what Aragon is before. That's right? yeah, I agree. Yeah, and, and but that's the thing. Like we do have gravity here. We do have these things where we can we we have case studies that we're looking at. One Hive especially, like that's an example. What did they do wrong in terms of how they conveyed their message, how they communicated their treasury management, and how they incorporated the rest of the community in those decisions. And I think if we can do this correctly, we, it'll take some time, but it does need support. You know, uh, if I come to the the forum right now with this policy document that I've that I have, and it's just you know, 
you know, it, it's really hard because even the feedback that I've got, you know, half the people want to do absolutely nothing. And then half the people just want to throw all of our money into aggressive funds or crowdsource funds from other organizations to manage on our bit. And it's just like, neither of these are very feasible. Like, like we can't do these things. Like we have to have some kind of unified direction on how we manage a treasury. And so, um, yeah. Well, that seems to be covered by, there's, can I just say a couple of things? Mm -hmm. Uh, one is uh, that's covered by the advice process. So we we can have a big crowd and we can still have all of the advice of those experts because we'll just do advice process on that. So instead of it being managed centrally by those people, we just have advice process from those same professional people and they will do will do uh, treasury management parties <laughs> we'll yeah. all figure out what the parameters are and we'll all inform each other and we'll just go at it in the same way we've been going at all of the other decisions that we've made that doesn't seem to do a sample party everybody's okay i don't even know what sample means but um but anyway so yeah let's just do a treasury management party so everyone knows what's going on why wouldn't we do that that doesn't make sense we've got advice process we've already done uh this kind of thing before so let's just do it like that the other part is is that um so there's a couple of uh working groups in here that are calling themselves DAO. we're we're you know wonka and i are are basically working on launching up and out of the the tec so that does a few things number one it stops costing the tec money at some point right we're yeah. working on that uh, but i don't see that that kind of concrete plan is happening necessarily with the other uh, group calling itself a dow which is the comms dow right yeah. at the same time it's it's also possible that you know um so so maybe it could be that just by taking two major sources of, of, of revenue that you've been having to fund up and out, get them to have their own economies and, you know, launch that way might actually help to reduce costs for the TEC. And maybe it is that, you know, uh, all of that is a positive thing, right? So the TEC gives birth to other things that are culturally, you know, related in some kind of sense. Um, but at the same time, I actually don't see that the comms DAO is, um, uh, functional enough to do the thing which you guys are actually talking about in terms of um, uh, th it's been my observation that in decentralized uh, groups that the message becomes very decentralized too and that's the worst possible thing that you can do for driving up your price or promoting your token or any of that stuff it's and, and i was talking to wonka about this in terms of gravity you know one of the most important things for me is that we have a cohesive uh inner narrative and and every person has to go through some kind of transformational thing we as a group have to go through a tra transformational thing and then that's why i'm forcing us to do the focus matrix stuff and all of that so that we know who we are and everyone goes oh hell yes and then <laughs> then we build everything else on top of whatever that narrative is and and what i'm my point about this is that i i recently took a um Azure database training for my regular job. What was amazing about it was you could see that what they did was they figured out what the entire pro narrative, the problem narrative, right, of the of the the people that they were serving, database administrators and people like that, right, and then they had. Uh, the solution narrative, and then they had a group of technical things that were built on top to match both the problem and the solution narratives, and it was all perfectly cohesive. Every single thing, like, okay, we've got these three things that database administrators all need to do, and that covers 100% of that. So we built our, all of our solution on those three things, and all of the technical underpinnings serve that narrative framework. So, you know, you can have one of the most technical things that's possible to be in the computer space, which is a database administrator, and still serve your narrative, right? And I think this is just a thing that we just don't do well. And despite having a group of people called the comms DAO inside of, you know, that we still just don't do it very well, right? Yeah. And, and best, so, like best standards and best practices and like professionalizing exactly. the, the right. services that you're providing. And that's the, right. yeah, like you said, that, that is the hard part. And I think Gravity, you guys are doing a really good job of like professionalizing the services that you're providing. However, right. like I think the other aspect of that is like, where does, you know, the big, big question and is, is where does the TEC economy come into that, that process and well, service being provided? 
And yeah, yeah. And but so, the economy know. serves the the narrative, right? Yep. So so I mean, without a narrative, you don't have an economy. What what would be the point of anyone coming, right? Yep. So so why are we all here? What are we all doing, right? Yep. And so what is that underlying narrative? And I I'm talking about this for two years, you know, but I but know. <laughs> you know, it's just it's like uh, I'm, I'm not trying to give uh, you know anybody a hard time, but I this is just a, a it's not just a problem here. I've I've been other DAOs that have exactly the same communication. Uh, problem of because they're they don't they don't see it in terms of narrative so all i'm trying to say is that i'm gonna do a thing with uh our guy uh for the, uh, the operations management thing where i'm going to talk about narrative construction and deconstruction and I'd, I'd like you know some of the stewards to to come to that as well so they can I understand would love to. To, and, and i do think it. that this would be really valuable in terms of developing a roadmap as well, kind of uh, constructing that narrative of like where we're heading as as a t as a or, or not even organization. Like I keep coming back to this idea of like think less like an organization, think more like a commons. Um, how do we how do we start to think as an as an economy as a token, and how do we provide the services that we've all had? Like we we've got all these different working groups that are ready to be products and services for TE projects that come into the space. How do we get this on the same page? How do we create the narrative to where we're all working towards the same objective? Um, and so I don't know. And maybe maybe we can maybe we can hold host this like a narrative creation session for this roadmap. I don't know if you'd be interested in helping out with that, but we've get, really got to be on get on the same page with everybody, all the working groups. Well, and and here's the here's the difficulty with my approach is that I actually require you to to change. Yeah. I require you to learn something. You, you, we, this is not just about a website. This is an interactive process where you internally figure out how the tools work and how the complexities are and what a narrative is, how do you construct it, how do you deconstruct it. And I have tools that simplify that process. But no matter what I do, it's still a complicated process. Juan's been with me from the beginning with this, and still, um, <laughs> it's still a it's still a challenge for everybody, right? And so I don't know any other way to do this other than to coach you into it, and and especially in the decentralized space, it's one thing if I have a client that says, "Look, you're the expert. Whatever you say, you go identify the narratives. You go figure all that out. That's why I'm paying you." Then I charge that person more money. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm doing 100% of that. But that just has no place at all in a decentralized space. The only thing, step one, step zero, is educating and making the people participating in the thing change and learn how narratives are constructed so that they can think about it in in terms of that. And only when everyone's like, oh, well, now I understand why this is important, because I just won't construct a website without having gone through the process with the group, right? And so even with the Gravity DAO, the reason why we're taking weeks to create all of this information is um, is because the 75% of the work is in in doing that. It's only 25% yeah. is in the creation of it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then you can phase it out and then you end up with a roadmap and you can then match the, the roadmap of your website to the roadmap of how Gravity DAO is spooling up and out of the TEC, for example. So you can harmonize those things too. But anyway, I just, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know what it is. How, what, why is it that we don't we don't do this uh, that well here in the TEC. So but I, can I ask this question real quick? It, it, do you think a problem uh, with with those efforts is because of the organization of our technical uh, human capital that the people who are able to develop websites, who are able to develop the infrastructure and the tools, uh, are very hard to organize? Like like, it, do you think if we had a better organization around our technical development teams, um, and they weren't so dispersed? Or, among so many different projects that we'd be more effective? Um, I think that that we as an organization need to decide that everything serves the narrative. And so that the way we talk about this culturally and internally is, is that, okay, Billy, Joe, Jim, Bob, you've got some technical skills and you can make a website. But there's a very different thing from having the technical skill to create a website to being able to, to create and generate the uh, the connector from the, the business need, the narrative of the business need to the underlying technical stuff, right? And that's like an architectural 
question. What I see is I can make a website, right? And so we, if you look at our website now, it is great if you're wanting to buy TEC and if you're a beginner. It doesn't do anything for anyone else. Yeah. Just yeah. nobody, right? Now, if you take a look at what we're doing with the gravity thing, the website is the, the container for all of the disparate things that we do, right? Because we care about the narrative above all things. So we have to keep the narrative inside of this thing and all of the other technical bits go inside of it, right? The way that the TEC works is we've got all these individual blocks of different people with different things and they're all trying to talk to each other like an object oriented thing. We're yeah. not doing that in the gravity thing. It's all in one bucket. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we're designing our way around it. Some of these things we'll do first. Some of these things we'll do second. Some of those things we'll do third, but it's all still going to be in this cohesive thing. And the website is the primary uh, uh, thing that's going to focus down on all of that. And in order to do that, the, the website has to serve a narrative. The HubSpot needs to serve a narrative. The video production has to serve the narrative. It's the narrative, the narrative, the narrative, the narrative, the narrative. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying it. There's only one thing you care about. The way you serve the narrative is all of these different things. Even the way the comms now does it is intrinsically uh, broken because they have all of these different groups, and, but none of them are talking about how is it that I connect to the same narrative. It's the video editing team, the translating team that so structurally the problem is is that you don't have everything in just the one place container. you know you have to have it, it in one the, container the narrative is the container the narrative is the container and it can't be otherwise uh, if it, you do it otherwise then your narrative becomes fragmented because now you've got you know gravity competing with you know uh, and and the, the team you can see we we have a decentralized thing right but yep. the team has its own narrative. The gravity has its own narrative. Omega has its own narrative. And and here I am sitting there going, geez, I wish that uh, the stewards heard this thing that the gravity people said, or this, I wish the stewards would hear this thing that the, the Omega team group just said. I wish the, like, <laughs> when do we ever talk about ethics, you know, in a stewards meeting? I don't, I don't hear that. We talk about how we do it but we don't talk about the specifics of it. You have to drill right down into that. What are the fundamental principles of it? Number one, the stuff you don't do. Number two is the stuff you actually do do. The only thing we talk about in stewards meetings or in any other working group is what do we do? We never yeah. talk about what it is that we don't do. And that means we're not an ethical organization, even though we're talking about how we are. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? It, and, and so if you, thought about it narratively, you would go, all we ever do is talk about the doing, and we never talk about what we don't do, right? Yeah. But if you were serving the narrative, you would know there to be ethical. You have to have both pieces and both need to be talked about in an equal fashion. So this is my, y y y so that's just my observation. So that we have our attention, I think, uh, in, slightly in the, in the wrong place in terms of that and for the TEC, and I'm trying not to make the same mistake with gravity. No, yeah, and I think that's extremely valuable, and you know, it, it sucks that it's taken us this long to to start to come around to that that, uh, that notion. But I do think you know, with this roadmap, I, I yeah, I'm gonna make this a priority. I have to finish this treasury policy, but I think having a roadmap and kind of framing, let's start the narrative, let's start building that container. Um, I think is a really good point um, because yeah, it it'll guide everything else. Because you're right, everybody, every working group is kind of doing their own thing in their own way, and it's not a cohesive uh, approach towards what we're trying to do as a whole. Right, and even the comms DAO is not enough to unify that, you know. No, because because so, if if they were, it would be more focused on how do we how do we like let's figure out the best way to do right. Twitter. Let's figure and, out the best it, way to do yeah, these and, services. Yeah, and not for lack of trying on my part. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? No, I'm honestly, yeah. I, I have. Go ahead. Can I say something totally in the other way? Yeah. Like yeah. When, when you see a, like TC aims to be an economy, and then you know uh, working groups or whatever it could be like companies or I don't know, but then it's like everyone is doing their own thing, and then it's okay like everyone is doing their own thing as long as you know at the end of the day like the economy is is working as expected. It's like I how I see it is like you know like. Yeah, but it I think have... what Dergadas is saying is that you know those those efforts need to be fit with inside this kind of cohesive narrative of what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that you know if 
if gravity is trying to help you know Aragon Dow with with conflict management, they need to have a good sense of like what other working groups are doing in in like this comprehensive goal that we have, where it's like okay, not only are we providing uh, conflict management, but we're also pro providing transparency. We're also providing uh, ethical framework. And how did these things fit into what we're doing? And I think that is what is missing from this, because if we start to look at this as an entire uh, comprehensive package of services and products that we're offering, TE projects that come to the space who, would, like, and I'll keep saying, the demand is there. The demand for these services and these products are there. People want to start a DAO. They want to start a pro TE project. And if they can come to the TEC and know that when they pay for our services and products that we're going to go in there, we're going to be professional, we're going to have standardized uh, procedures and infrastructure tools that they can use and implement, then we're going to have a lot more services and a lot more revenue coming in. And that, or we can just drive things towards the TEC economy rather than, uh, you know, um, trying to do these disparate uh, kind of efforts towards making money that are inefficient and not kind of this whole package deal. I, if, I think that if you, if you, if you sorry, if you, if you take a look at um, the two halves of gravity, right? Tr trust creation and conflict management, right? You, you can see that as, as its own narrative, but if you, if you can see it on another, um, uh, on another spectrum, you could say that that the reason why conflict occurs is because people's narratives have diverged, and so, and so it creates conflict. When you talk about creating trust creation, what you're doing is talking about harmonizing the narratives. That's all that's happening. Everything is a narrative. Everything, 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 everything is a narrative. There is nothing which isn't. So if your economy is doing well, because you, you have a coherent narrative, right, internally, and then when you want to go promote a thing, then you can do that because you're already internally coherent. So the message that will be received by whoever you're talking to will automatically be coherent. But the so so we have a conflict in the sense where we want to grow our economy but you cannot do that without having a coherent narrative and so that solves a number of problems it solves onboarding problems it solves i mean it solves so many problems because everything the economy all the working groups and everything are all serving the same master and they would all be talking about it in context with the larger, broader narrative, and then they would say, okay, we're serving our own narrative here, but then we'd all the time be trying to figure out, okay, so are we even a DAO at all? Like this is part of, you've seen maybe some of the graphics that I've made recently, is that we just skip over and we just proclaim ourselves to be a DAO, but none of the behaviors that we're doing, or just a limited number of the behaviors that we're doing uh, actually serve our own goal. So how do we have a dashboard for how DAO are we? Do we have a, a number for how well we're serving the entire DAO concept? And, and, and this is what I'm saying. We don't have that because we don't have a connection to this larger narrative framework. And if we were to do that, then everyone would be united. Every, then everyone would automatically see the value when they showed up in the TEC. Yeah, we're the nicest community around. We, everyone knows that. But, but, but and that's why people want to come and do things. But it doesn't solve the you want to solve all these different problems at once it all comes down to you know narrative 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 so sorry about that no 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 it's it's great and and in in terms of taking this conversation and putting it into some concrete uh, next steps i would i would actually like to ask each one of you um, in terms of a roadmap what are the what are the the next steps that we can take right now uh, just give me like two next steps that you would take personally and then Focus matrix. Okay, there's one. Give me one more. I'm trying to not talk so other people can. No, no, no. Yeah, I was gonna say, give me one more uh, outside of focus oh, matrix. Uh, um, yeah. The well, the focus matrix includes unique value proposition. You know, all of those those different things, right? So you have a room roadmap and all of those. So it's got multiple tools inside of it so okay. you know so it does all the minor bits that i would have also mentioned 
What about from a community discussion standpoint? Say, from the perspective of like, I'm I'm going to write a forum post, and this is the message that I want to get in terms of catalyzing this effort. Uh, we need real buy-in from all of the existing uh, stewards and leadership. Real commitment to okay. that. that and, and they need, they all need to be educated and understand uh, precisely why that is. Talk about it. If we're doing uh, sprint planning, we're doing retrospectives. Did we serve the narrative sufficiently this two weeks? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> did we, you know, not just did we meet our own goals, right? The problems of the organization is they start looking at their, um, did they do the thing they said that they were doing? And it becomes about doing rather than about being. Narratives are about being, you know, everything else is, you know, so the doing should be serving the being and not not having it be like we are because we've done, you know, so. Yeah. And what about you, Zepti? I mean, what, what were you, what would your next steps be? I really, there's something that I feel like it's missing on the TC and since the beginning and it's something like just was working on is a narrative like we don't have a narrative on the TC and then something I mean it's not like a next step but it's more like a concern I have I, I really don't want us to be like uh, becoming like you know having a lot of roles that do a lot of stuff but at the end of the day they do nothing uh, and I see like some proposals that I'm seeing it's like where it could end up uh so yeah i'm very concerned about like you know like in order to a decentralized community to work like people who is providing value should get compensated and people who is not providing value should not get compensated at all like it's yep. very so, so you'd say like a model for how we work and uh, like a compensation model yeah yeah okay. yep. um, is, is that what the you? rewards working group is doing well, uh, it, it I mean, is. What uh, else would they be doing other than? No, no, that? It, it definitely is. It's one of those things where you know, the funding for the rewards group is limited. It is our it, it is our priority to fund it. Um, it but the you know the getting con getting compensated through the reward system is not going to be you know it's not going to carry you through. So it, this is kind of like keeping the the dedicated contributors that we do have engaged and making sure that they stick around. That is the the purpose of the rewards group at the moment. Um, it is not it is it is not a good enough system to carry us in terms of like making sure people are fully compensated. But then that being said, the role model is not that is not sustainable. Period. Um, having roles is just it, it's just not sustainable unless you have some significant revenue coming in, and which we don't. Um, so, um, well, you know, you know what we, sustains you in both a bear and a bull market is is a really solid um narrative right yeah so that's and 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 that's one thing because it's like you know holding on to people who are interested and talented and, and want to to contribute is is very difficult thing because you know we, we're going to see a fling of human capital out of the system if we can't sustain even or like at minimum the rewards group and so rewards group is the priority right now but we do need to figure out a model of how to compensate people in the system without you know that that can keep people around that are really important that are really doing really good work like everybody in this call right now i would love for all of us to be compensated adequately like we we deserve it we've put in the time we've done done the work that needs to be done and so but we have to figure out a model that works and that scales um because the scaling part is the problem uh, right now, with the roles model, we, we have this kind of siloed group of people who are paid and then people who are wanting to be paid but can't because we have this system that, that limits the amount of people we can have in, in, inside the system, and that's not a good way to do things. Um, and so I've, I've proposed kind of this UBI model, which scales with the amount of services that we provide. It has yet to be acknowledged by many working groups. I thought it would work really well with the comms team. Um, but but then again, we have to get our services down first. We have to be able to provide a good product in order for that to work, um, and a good service for that to work. But uh, so anyway, uh, that is a good point, though. Is is just working on the compensation model uh, as part of our roadmap. Um, how about you, Wonka? 
what do you think are good next steps for the roadmap? What 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 are the first steps that you you would take? Yeah, I I agree on on making the roadmap, and um, also having each working group think of a long term impact. I feel that some of the working groups, um, yeah, have like a short term um idea and sometimes um we, we, when we have a long-term um aspiration in each working group um like we can we can have more understanding of, on on what's the value that that working group provides and I also think that there should be more focus on each working group um, having as their services. And I think Gravity um, ha has has gone in a very independent way, but it's because um, we've been very like um, like proactive and looking into that direction since the start. But um, I, I think that we, we are um, like aligned with the TC. And also, I think that we can find a way um, for everyone to collaborate and for every service to be good for the people that is providing the service and um, for, for the people also who, who is benefiting from the service being provided. Services centered. Yeah, uh, like, and this is an experience I had because I I worked <clears throat> in in a private university and in a public university. Yeah. And in the public university, it was always like, "Hey, this is the budget that we have. In what are we going to spend this budget? And um, yeah, let let's expand this budget, but." In the private university, it was always like, "Hey, how this activity is is making money for the university or tributing to our um, goals, and also like um, how this activity is raising um, funds." So, so I, I I think. We have to move from that public mindset where we're like, okay, we, we receive money and we expend it to a more to a more entrepreneurial mindset where where um we have to make money and we this is like a more like somehow the TC is like a startup and it, it needs to be um profitable and it needs to yeah, yeah, I agree with Durga. That's like a, a narrative, like, and I, I also think that we already have it because we are advancing the TEC, and I think that the, advancing the token engineering field, and I feel that by providing services, we we tribute to that goal of advancing uh, the token engineering field. I feel that maybe providing gravity to other communities is um extending a learning that we that we have gotten from um the application of token engineering and of the commons framework so yeah, yeah i think providing services is is the right way yeah and and so i, I guess i'll share mine as well so my, my big three are going to be uh, you know big next steps is documentation we we have to Get better at documentation. I, I tried to take it on, take it on, take myself take myself early on to do a lot of documentation around our processes and procedures. Uh, but it's just it's just it's so much and it's always changing and there's a lot of it. And this is something that each working group, whether it's transparency, gravity, tempo, you know, omega, like we have to be better at documentation and, and putting forth, uh, uh, you know, having a central repository for that type of documentation. This and is then, a problem that's solved by the narrative too, right? Yeah, 
it is, yeah. And, and, and I think it, it helps with the packaging within these services as well, because if, if we have that narrative of like, That's okay, right. we're providing services, then documentation is a necessary component of providing those services and, and making sure that we have it. Um, and then I guess the other two things are, are creating best practices, making sure that we're professionalizing what we do and making sure that the services we provide are the best that they can be. And then the, the last thing for me is uh, developing our technical teams to serve our service styles because um, like if I want a bot right now to be implemented, it's really hard for me to go somewhere to be like, hey, like I might go to buy IP, but he's he's so backed up on his stuff. Like we don't have a cohesive team to go to to say, hey, I need this built for me right now. And having that ability is it would make our make everybody's uh, output a lot better in terms of of making sure that we all have the right tools and we're building the best products that we can build. Um, and so, Nate, yeah, I, I also think that we need to talk about regaining momentum. Because maybe we're having these conversations here. Yeah. And maybe we are waiting for maybe next month for, it, for us to be able to, to, to have a, a, an impact. Yeah. But if we are talking and considering that next month participation from the stewards will still not be um, fully present, we need to then think of a period of two months for us to 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 be able to to well, part of me is like i don't want to i don't want to worry about that so much Blanca. like i think that you know we we do have people who are here and who are participating and who are engaging and so whether the stewards end up showing up or not is is irrelevant in my opinion i think that you know getting this ball rolling and getting it started and having the conversations and forcing them to the table is is what we can do right now in this moment and i think that is the best thing that we can do right now and i think that you know if they're interested <laughs> then they'll come through if not then we're going to keep moving forward um uh, but, i think that yeah, we're going to get rid of this idea of like we got to wait for certain people to come in and have comments uh, because you know we, we've got to keep operating I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. And we, we have to invite them to the table and think for the right momentum to do everything. Yeah, and that's no offense to anybody. I'm just saying, you know, we we yeah. we should we should be acting, you know. Can, hey, baby, how I... are you? Oh hey Dragon. How's it going? Yeah, go ahead, Dragonos. Oh, I just wanted to um suggest maybe a deeper version yeah. of what you're talking about um just now in yeah. terms of best practice right but best practice is at the end of this thing right i think that i think it's it's super important that we actually as a group be able to identify which kind of practice are we doing can and i pause I think, you real quick to get off sorry i just yeah. want to give bear the update hey bear we're talking about roadmap and we're talking about the best next steps for developing a roadmap and a narrative and so um, just trying to catch you up on things. But yeah, we're just yeah, no. discussing broader scale. So uh, Thank you, so, Nate. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing is that actually I've been, I've been listening to the whole conversation oh. from the TEC recorder. So <laughs> oh, nice. Cool. Yes, All I've right. been just like fascinated by the conversation. I, I, just, I just wanted to join because from the question you were saying that what would be like good next steps for the, the development of this roadmap? Yes, please. Something that I would like to just contribute with is um, I think it's super important to have more of these conversations, more of these spaces. You know, I feel like we have a lot of calls. Uh, we have the sprint planning, sprint retrospective, council, uh, weekly calls in working groups. But these type of conversations, they actually never happen, right? So I feel like probably this one, it's been probably one of the most um, important and ritual, ritual uh, calls that I've that I've heard. So I just feel we need more of that. You know, like we need to what you were saying to put all of, all of these topics in the table and start discussing them ASAP, right? So yeah, I just wanted to to comment on that and to to completely agree on what you guys are saying about the narrative and about uh, creating something cohesive between the working groups and. Yes, like I'm completely on board that this should be like number one priority for the TEC right now. Yeah, and 
again, like just restating what you said, Nate, as well, like uh, not waiting more, you know, not waiting for other people to show up, you know, like I feel I also agree that there's a lot of people already involved that, and that they want to participate. And I think this would be like a crucial moment for for start doing that. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to share. Thanks, Peter. And, and welcome, ITALP. Um, this is the sprint planning call. Today we're kind of just talking about uh, macro issues within TEC, so uh, you're welcome to listen in. Would you like to introduce yourself before we continue with Derek Voss? All right, you're on mute, ITALP. I'll give you five seconds if you want to introduce yourself. If not, we'll keep going. Five, four, three, two, one. It's on you, Derek. So I'm just saying that um, we do all of the all four of these things in TEC. The question is, is that I'm I'm still wondering. This is a way to narratively capture in an effective, action-oriented way what it is that you're doing at any given moment. So the overall TEC encompasses all of these things. The question is, is that is what we're dealing with chaotic right now? Sure, and that's definitely made more so by the by the market. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's so a lot of the stuff that we might have assumed back when it was a bear market during the first year and a half of my participation in the TEC uh, often probably seemed like we were just moving out of the complex and doing exaptive practice, coming across this Rubicon with all kinds of good practices, right and and experts and and people you could rely on and all that stuff. And from that, then creating models that then go across this boundary to to deal with the fixed constraints. But if you're talking about best practice, and it doesn't have to be your goal in every situation. We need to have people who are good at, at being able to cross the boundary from the realm of the expert into creating best practices for our clients. There's no doubt that we should be able to do that. And the TEAM is a good example of that. You know, those folks, they create really good, and I imagine we charge for that, right? Like we we ed educate to token engineers, and, and so we've created this kind of pathway that exists here. What we don't have a good pathway of is the the realm of the, the relationship between the complex and the complicated and moving from you know enabling constraints to governing constraints in a way that will actually later enable us to get back into the complex when it's required. And so what I'm suggesting is basically that that we would have a the narrative would serve um, we would we would need a narrative that would would serve us in all four of these different things, and that when a thing is happening, we would be able to then jump down and say what response you know, or action mode do we need to be in now in order to handle whatever it is that's going on? So I think that what we haven't done the best job of is going, geez, there's a bear market now. What do we need to do in all of these domains? Because automatically the complex is going to become more chaotic because of the fact that it's a bear market. Automatically, we're going to have experts drop right out because uh, they just don't exist anymore because they want to go make money somewhere else because they're not making it in crypto right yeah. and automatically you know you're going to have um uh, p people who are number go up are just going to get booted right off of the boundary between the clear and the chaotic and be like well geez i'm not making any money here and there's no narrative there's no and and my number go up thing is just going to make me abandon the whole thing so it's going to kick them into the chaotic too and i just don't think that we're we're adaptive enough, ad adaptable enough as a as an organization yet to be able to sort of you know um, I, I just never hear anybody talking about this stuff when it so, is so a guess, really good framework to, to my, be able to figure question, that out. My question between that is is like you know we like something you said was that yeah we you know when we do have turnover when we do have new blood coming in or we have experts leaving the system. Is, is how, you know, crossing those barriers between the complicated and complex and complicated and clear, like what are the things that make that, that transition more frictionless? You know what I'm saying? Like, like Absolutely. How, do we, how do we, how do we, like, I, I, it's hard for me to kind of capture like exactly, is it things like documentation? Is it things like uh, onboarding and education? What, what, 
well, between each of those barriers, what is exactly so, makes it easier? Okay, that's a great question. Yeah. So your exact thing about you want documentation, the documentation exists in this boundary between the complicated, it's the complicated uh, expert, right? The person who's the the, the, the domain expert uh, in, in the complicated area who has uh, a really mastery of all the governing constraints then creates <coughs> good practices and then travels south into the clear with models and documentation. That's literally their entire job, right? Whereas uh, the pipeline between the complex and the complicated is more like a pipeline and it needs to go in both directions, right? So so you need to have people who are, um, uh, are really good at creating documentation and models and everything and generating fixed constraints. We have too many of those people because our entire culture emphasizes those things. Where we're kind of lacking is, is in this pipeline between the complex. And we've got some people that are really good at taking certain complex ideas and turning them into good practice and governing constraints. Sebnem, I think of is particularly good at this, right? But, but, um, but at the same time, what we don't have is, is we don't have people who are all that eager to understand and recognize when it's necessary to, you know what, I don't have a certain realm of expertise here. There is no domain that actually, there's no good practice at all. I need to move backward into the complex and then be able to see what, uh, and then and mine out the enabling constraints side of this picture. Do you see what I mean? So, yeah. so this right here is our is our problem, and that is, by the way, the management thing. So, if you're talking about management, which is what we're talking about now, if you don't have a bi-directional pipeline between the complex and the complicated that goes both ways, then you don't have an effective management structure. We have a bunch of people who are really good at moving this complicated to clear thing and then back again, right? Really, really good at that. And we have almost nothing whatsoever that'll help us with the chaotic in terms of the structure of our organization. So I hope that helps. No, it does. And I think thinking in terms of like, uh, the the pipelines that you're talking about and and what what are those pipelines consist of like and, and how do we make it transition easier for for back and forth between them because um, when, when when you do have you know experts leaving and there's this huge gap and you have new people who are really eager to help out and are talented but they don't have a sense of uh, of direction and 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 tools to to actually move through those pathways it's very very difficult to get on the same page. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that is a huge part of scaling. And I'm not sure exactly how to uh, model that in particular, like you'd like to, well, to capture everything give, in between yeah. those boundaries, but. Um, I can give you another hint. Okay? okay. So if you're going from the clear to the complicated, that's an education process. So if you're used to fixed constraints and narrow thing, you've only got four blocks that anything, anything that ever comes into your world, you stick it in these four blocks. The moment you go to go backward, which is to move from the clear to the complicated, education is involved, right? And so you have to basically turn yourself in from a person who was only previously dealing with really narrow ways of thinking about everything. There's one good answer for everything. That's the clear. But the moment you want to go be an expert, boy, you got to have a broader domain level experience, right? And so you then have to have a more flexible approach rather than demanding best practice. Then you have to just be okay with governing constraints, a lot more flexibility and good practice. But then the moment you want to move backward from the complicated into the complex, it takes humility because then you'll realize that geez i've got a <laughs> the 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 all the governing constraints that i thought i have just don't work all of the good practice and all of my sense analyze respond things i'm not able to analyze what's happening because i i can't i can't even tell what's happening right so then now i have to go back to the complex and now i have to probe around and figure out what's going on then i do my sense making and then i respond right and so you can see that that there's kind of a chain here there's probe sense analyze then respond and somebody who's thinking about things in terms of the management framework needs to do all four of those things and, and smash these two things together and create this kind of bi-directional sort of setup. But what I'm my pointing out is just directionally, if you go uh, counterclockwise, 
all of that involves um, uh, a kind of uh, humility, and it also means you have to learn and be educated about something, right? So, but but the so moment I put this into my own own experience that you, right. you have reference for is the HubSpot thing. You know, yeah, I, exactly. I had this idea yep. of like exactly. exactly what we're going to use HubSpot for is in yep. the clear realm. It became yep. complicated when we had to to turn this thing into <laughs> like managing multiple people having access to HubSpot. Mm. And then the humility of going, oh, this is way too complex for me. But like, he here's where it goes. How do we prevent people from just dropping it altogether once it becomes complex? How do we get people to to empower them to go back to the complicated to figure out the good practices and not uh, get lost in in this type of area? Sure. And and just having more people who think along these lines to have a see. This is also a narrative, right? This is and to be really comfortable with the way that this narrative works and not just to see, okay, there are four things here and then there's some stuff in between, but to understand how those relationships work, right? To understand if you if I move in one direction or another, what happens? What is the main thing that I'm dealing with when I'm when I'm looking at that, right? And and the great thing about it is this agile framework that we already use maps really well to to Kinefin, right? And there are well known things that you can just you, we could send people to <laughs> to yeah. training classes. You can buy stuff, and it just teaches you how to you know connect those things. And then 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 you'll automatically be thinking about things in terms of this, right? So so then, you know, but but you also need people like me who who think about things in the broadest possible terms where you're including, I don't care what direction, but I what I want people to be able to do is to know that such things do exist and there are tools that they can they can use. Deep democracy is a complex thing with enabling constraints. You need people like Lean and Jeremy and these folks to guide you, and you need the humility as stewards and as working group. Um, you know, leads and, and even, um, uh, you know, people who are called upon to provide, um, you know, uh, like expertise, they need to have enough humility to say, you know what, I might need to, in in this situation, no matter how much expertise I have, that's not enough. What I need to do is go back into the complex and be willing to, to put my lab coat on and yeah. experiment, right? And then, what you've then done is you've made, you know, you've turned yourself into a synthetic being that can move across the complex and the complicated, which is what management really should be uh, in, in terms of this, right? Yeah. So, and, and I would like to put this kind of framing within um, our, our roadmap discussion. Um, and I actually, uh, Bear, I didn't get a chance to ask you, um, but perhaps you were, you were listening to it, but uh, I wanted to ask, um, what your what, what what your first steps would be like your next steps if you personally had to develop a roadmap what would the first steps that you'd want to take are so i'm just trying to compile this into a kind of a forum post so we can get get the ball rolling on this yeah um maybe something some next step that could happen is that, that i've been thinking while listening to all of this it's something to do with awareness of of this, like of the creation of a roadmap, I don't think that people around the community are seeing this as a priority. Probably, I remember. I think it was not yesterday's uh, uh, print planning, but I think two weeks ago. This also came as a as an objective, I think, and it didn't really, I think, echo around the community. So I think some awareness in, in that in that sense, and then like finding that group of people that might to wa want to take it and start like uh, putting more more effort and, and time into it i think that would be important uh, also i'm thinking that part of the sample roadmap there's you know like one one goal that is set to happen in september that is like working on the actual vision of the services for the tc in the for the coming two years you know so that just, this just reminded me of that, and I think maybe it doesn't happen in September, right? Maybe that's something that is part of this and needs to be moved to to be started now, right? So, um, yeah, just like talking more around the community, see what people is thinking. You know, I just, I just right now, I just want to share this recording of this call for everyone to watch it 
to to understand like what what's happening and and listen to what you guys are saying i think that's that's important and and yeah right now i i i can think of of more more steps yeah and and so since this is sprint planning uh, you know if if you have any issues i just want to remind everybody if you have issues please update them um if you have something that needs to be created please create them. I'm going to go through the, um, the, the board and update it for this sprint um, because it's kind of been in kind of ad hoc uh, uh, session here. But uh, I, we, we have talked about a lot of really great things. Our sprint retrospective action was developing a roadmap, which I've been harping on. I'm glad it got, got, got the votes yesterday. So we're going to put that on, on the sprint board this, the, during the sprint. And I really kind of want to actively start taking steps to having that conversation. And I was also wondering, Durgadas, do you have kind of a, a in-text narrative of uh, framing a narrative for, for the TUC? Like um, kind of like the importance of creating narrative that I can include within the forum post of some kind? Kind of like a paragraph of like, this is why creating a narrative is important for us type of thing. So I, I just don't think I'd be able to articulate and get all of the details of that, uh, you know, essence as as you you you're able to. Yeah, I guess I would just say that you know uh, a narrative is a um, is is an outcome of of an archetype, which is an outcome of just language itself. And so the connections between all of those things basically mean that that narratives are unifying force multipliers, you know, just three words, really, you know, um, <clears throat> they they unify, right? So just like, you know, my tagline for gravity, it's always been gravity, you know, brings us together, right? And and so that's the that's a unifying narrative. That's a beautiful way of saying what gravity does, right? And so so if you think about whatever it is that you're doing, if you're trying to promote token engineering and you're trying to become a standards organization, what standards have we produced so far? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. What, what are they? You know, exactly. Um, if we're calling ourselves a DAO, how well, how DAO are we? Do you see what I'm saying? How decentralized? How autonomous? How organized? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, we, we have metrics for those things, right? If we don't, then then there's no underlying narrative that says that we're a DAO at all. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? And so so what, what I find is that, that this is all part of the legacy cultural code base that we all come from. We're all divided from ourselves. It, Divide and rule is the, the the rule of the world outside of the DAO space, right? And we carry a lot of those assumptions forward into this thing. And so you can see that if you have a narrative, you have a unifying force multiplier, right? The thing that brings you together. And even when you have areas that are separate, you have areas that are chaotic, you have areas that are complex, you can still have this unifying narrative. And so that's why I show tools like Kinefin and other things to kind of show how they're all connected. So I don't know, does the unifying force multiplier uh, thing help? It does, yes. I've been typing it. Thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole idea of like things, you know, when we have these types of chaotic complexity, you know, yeah. it requires a narrative. To it's a mythology. Everything. And we yeah. all have a mythology. You, Nate, have a personal mythology. Wonka has a, a personal story he tells himself about himself. I'm in a relationship with a person, and there's a story that I tell myself about how that relationship works or doesn't work. All of these things, that, that my participation in the TEC, there's a narrative I tell myself, and that's why I keep showing up. And without that narrative, then I just can't come. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a story that you, Nate, tell yourself every day when you come to the TEC about why this works for you in your life. That's that's uh, your personal mythology that connects to the larger mythology of token engineering commons, aka uh, a narrative, all of which is automatically implied just by the existence of any language. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, because I kind of want to just frame it frame the initial conversation within that type of, uh, uh, you know, problem statement, problem solution statement. So um, 
having I, I will just, I will just point out that when I first came here and started talking about this, this was a thing that that Griff and and Jess and a bunch of the people who had been here for a long time was like, well, we already did all that. Like, okay, okay. but but is do you use it for guidance? Is it a thing that you know what I'm saying? Like, so the most when persistent the narrative of the organization has changed completely. Then totally. Did these new people buy into that? Did right. They have you know ownership of that narrative. Do they exactly. Feel... And and if we don't continue to talk about it, like an old timer, just like, well, you know, that's done, right? That okay, but then how is it that a person that shows up, you know, is going to understand that that's been done and 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 inculcate that and educate that them, you know, within themselves, um, yeah, you know. But all I'm saying with that is just that uh, um, the yeah the narrative has to be has to be nourished right you have to nourish the narrative <laughs> it has to be cared for all the time it has to be you know and 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 so look I mean you look at a anything that's carried forward like that you know how is it that you can get you know two hundred Amish people to carry a barn a mile. Yeah. This is a narrative. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? They all have a, a unifying narrative. You look at any intentional community, you know, that lasts, it's they have they have a really deep connection with the narrative and they're continuously nourishing it all the time. Uh, so we do a good job, you know, creating token engineering things, but we don't do a good job is uh, creating a, a unified narrative that exists this all between us we're all telling ourselves individual stories and that's why we keep showing up but, on it. yeah but 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 we have to buy into the shared thing more than we do to our own individual you know idea about it yeah because even the working groups themselves you know I, and and you know gravity you guys have done such an amazing job but then again like you guys have your own narrative that you're abiding by and so like when I take that into consideration and looking at the whole TEC, there's still not that unifying thing. Um, even well, though we spend a lot of time nourishing the narrative between Juan and myself and and all of the yeah. other people who are here, we spend tons of time on that. Wouldn't you agree, uh, Juan? Yeah, sure. And <clears throat> after this call, we are having the website meeting that is very aligned to that. <laughs> yeah, but, so you guys are <laughs> but but, but I guess my question is like how much of that narrative incorporates the rest of the TEC? You know what I'm saying? Like like that narrative I feel might be like really focused on gravity and you have a really good group of people in gravity who who are following that narrative. But should that narrative fit inside the larger TEC narrative is what I guess my question. That well, would be the idea, but yeah. I guess you know We've tried hard to do that, really hard, I would say. And at the same time, there's just there's a different kind of culture in the TEC, and not all of the stuff that we're talking about just resonates with everybody. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just you know, and and I think I think a lot of times people think that because your aims might be different, that the way you go about doing those aims is actually also drastically different when in fact i don't think it is because we're we're all i mean that's what i was saying right in the very first meeting about the website was look the first thing we need to kind of agree on is that we're all a commons and we're taking that from the tec and then from the common stack and the common stack commons thing is the most rooted fundamental thing about the way that works for yeah. us and we need to make sure that that's the thing that we're talking about in terms of you know so it's the gravity dow commons really more than it is just the gravity down yeah and and i also you know i i wonder about the this concept of like i don't know when, when it comes to creating narratives and having consistency within working groups um i don't know i i'm we're we're getting close to the end of this call, nope, but but it's um, a really good question, and I'll I'll give you an answer to the question. Uh, I think that what what I heard was, see, for me is when people turn their minds away from the narrative to what they have to do, or to the hierarchy, or to something else. Do you know what I'm saying? That yeah. where they turn away from the largest narrative, right? 
And, and it's like, well, if you look at the military, right, you, you, the Marines, you know, they're the Marines. They know that they're the first boots on the ground. That's their job. They're the, be the tip of the spear. That's their whole thing. You know what I mean? First yeah. in, last out. That's their job. That's what they signed up for. Whereas the Army is not that, you know, but the guys on the ground. And then the Navy, they're the guys in the sea. Do you see what I mean? The Air Force are the guys above, right? So they all know what their roles are. They're all part of this huge scope that encompasses the entire, you know, uh, frame that's of what war is. Do you see what I mean? And yeah. so that's why they're all called. There's different things. And if you didn't have all four of them, then it just wouldn't make any sense at all because you have to have all four. Right. And yeah. so that's, that's a narrative. That's literally, you know, the, the narrative. So my but point about that question would be is like, how do you prevent them from competing with each other or from them to having, you know, one central command, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, but it, you, you, if there you, is no central command, how do you keep them from, you know, how do you coordinate with each other without well, overlapping narratives? Yeah, well, and, and so there, there, there is some overlap, right? So the Marines have some of their own airplanes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not all the Air Force. The, 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 you know, the Army has some of their own boats, but they just don't have giant destroyers and an aircraft carrier. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there there are there are some overlap and there's always going to be like that but but metaphorically it's all kind of the same you're still going to have some of that but each narrative is distinct unto itself which is taught right from basic boot camp right at the start the the boot camp for for a, an air force and and an army person is is the same but the, what they're orienting you on is on the Air Force, on the Army, on the Navy, Specific on the Marines, <laughs> and and instead of you know, and and there's no way for a guy who's in the boot camp to know how different that is from the Army, <laughs> or how different that it is, or the same from. They don't have to know that, but you know, yeah. so this the narrative that 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 unifies them and gives them their role. So each thing gives them both the, the unifying narrative and the role at the same time, and yeah. that's the most effective narrative of all. Right. And so here's the big thing with me is that, and, and I agree with you, and I think this really works really well if you have individuals that stay put in, into their role and in, in, into their you know working group. We have so many people, myself included, who cross the different working groups all the time. And so shifting narrative and shifting narrative and shifting narrative without having that overall narrative is very, very difficult in a lot of ways. You know, having how do you balance the autonomy of the Omega working group to um, take most of their calls off of Discord away from, uh, you know, and, and using Zoom, for example, or doing their own thing without a lot of communication with the rest of the TEC? Uh, how do you enable that to happen, but also maintain that narrative without tripping over yourself? You know what I'm saying? Well, so the, the boss of the entirety of the armed forces and my armed forces metaphor is the civilian uh, government, governance, yeah. right? So they have a commander in chief who's not a military person and that's his job, right? So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's kind of the way that I see my role is for you, it might be stressful that, oh, geez, I, there's all these different things. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not interested in everything that's going on. What I'm interested in is what's common between them, what's shared between them. Is there shared language? Are they communicating with each other? Do they have, you know, do they have roles where each working group feels like they're fulfilling their role and no one's, and there is no giant piece, missing piece left out of the TEC? I relish that role. It might be overwhelming for you. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, we all just might feel differently about it. No, that's that's a good point, and I like that analogy to be honest. And I will say that you know, uh, coming at the top of the hour, and thank you for joining this sprint planning. I, I know we didn't do any sprint planning really, um, <laughs> but but you know we we did in a lot of ways. And yeah. so I'm going to update the board if you can in your async, just to update what you can, so it makes my life a little easier from going through all these issues. Um, Please do so, and uh, if you, ha I just want to pass it around. If you have any last things to say, so uh, start off with Wonka, I guess. Nothing. Uh, thank, thank you, Nate. And it's great to have um, these conversations. And um, I, I also feel that that um, everything is an opportunity. So, so yeah, engaging in, in these conversations is super interesting. I, I also look forward on how can we. Um, 
shape all of the working groups, shape of all of our services, and collaborate between all the projects. I, 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 I am happy that I've been participating in this. And yeah, I, I also wish that um, we find support also from the other people who is absent today so that um, there can be like a lot of synergy on, on this. You want to pass it? I will pass it to Bear. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just like, um, I, I think this was one of the, um, one of the best planning, sprint planning sessions, because we actually, like one of you said, we focus more on the being and not in the doing of the TEC. And I think that's something we, we should do, we should do more. Um, so I, yeah, I'm just really, really happy of, of, of having been able to, to listen to what you guys said. And I just pass it to Durgadas. Yeah, I've talked way too much already. Um, so I'm happy to defer. <laughs> no, thank you, Durgadas. And yeah, I'm glad we had these conversations. Um, I'm going to um, post the roadmap as one of the issues. Um, and I'm going to start a TEC forum post and some documentation, and I'll share it with all of you. If you guys want to add comments or even comment on the forum, I think it'd be really it will be appreciated. Um, so yeah, I just want to get the ball rolling on the roadmap, and I want to get the ball rolling on having more of these conversations, as uh, Bear put it. And so uh, thank you all for bearing with me and just having a conversation with me during the sprint planning session. So thank you guys. Thanks for uh, leading this thing. Yeah, and uh, talk to you all later. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, yeah thank you, Dorgadas. Thank you, Juanca. I right, hope you have a good we're, rest of the day. We're going to the website planning right now, so you guys are welcome. Nice. In the uh, Gravity uh, channel. Nice. Yeah, I, I will take um, one minute or two minutes to drink some water and be there. Yep, sounds good. Later, guys. See you later. Bye.